Hi guys. Morning. Um, yeah, I, I'm Ivan from Hong Kong. Um, a lot of people actually talk to me not because of WordPress recently, so. Uh, but I'm, talk I'm talking about WordPress here, though. Um, all right. Okay, let's begin. So a, a very brief uh, bio that um, I, I'm using WordPress since 15 years ago um, because I use WordPress to test like the SEO aspect uh, for the website. And I built like 15, 50 design uh, in order to test the, uh, the SEO in the WordPress. And some of them actually went quite well. I, I exited some of the site um, 10 years ago. And recently I have a WordPress agency which built 350 site, uh, WordPress and WooCommerce site for a customer and optimization as well. Um, so I, I like to do a lot of WordPress stuff. So that's why I also organize um, in Hong Kong the webcam. Right, um, and also I did publish some books uh, in in Amazon, and in, I got lucky; it, it got into the top. And there's some strategy as well if you want to um, learn later on. So today's topic is about the content strategy, um, how I could I could um, do one content and publish to five different channel, and uh, basic concept for the lead generation as well as the SEO stuff, which I, I I'm more passionate about. And this um, exact strategy I used uh, a few months ago, I already have an uh, agency to do WordPress stuff, but I launched another one for uh, consultancy business. I use that as well um, to reach this amount um, recently. So the idea, the idea um, for SM, SME uh, like myself, to voice out to more people the branding or, or what we offer is difficult because we do not have a lot of budgets like the big guy. So what I do is I want to make good use of a one single content um, to multiply it in order to reach out more people. So the entire idea is to reach out to more people in different channel with um, one source of content. So this is what I do. Basically, I have a channel uh, because I'm, I'm doing uh, online course and in the education stuff. So I do a video and then I put that video in Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn, of course, because Facebook and LinkedIn actually embrace video more, which means it gives you more boost uh, to, to reach out the audience. And then those are three different platforms, right? And then I um, go to uh, Fire or, or other platform to ask someone to transcribe because I actually speak Cantonese in Hong Kong um, which is harder to find people to transcribe. Um, I use those platform and then I transcribe into a blog post um, which is what we are, I use for the WordPress. And the other one is that I use a, a platform, um, I, I use a tools online which I can, I can convert YouTube into MP3 and then I use a free platform called Anchor and it will automatically upload to the Apple, Google or Spotify broadcast. So this is how I use it as a um, as, um, solopreneur or, or SME business that from one single video into five different channels. And because of WordPress, um, I could transcribe into tags which you can um, attract traffic in the SEO aspect. So, in order to do video, um, it is actually quite easy. Uh, in the past, I, I, I want to make it more professional. Now, I, I really don't care. I just take the phone and then I just do it anywhere. I can do it here together with you guys live if you want to. So, in the past, uh, because I don't have a studio, I don't have a, a great budget, what I do is that I turn my restroom from my home into a studio, <laughs> right? <laughs> That simple. So I bought something in Taobao, a curtain, which is green. And then I bought something like this, a light for KOL, right? And then I use an app, which can take out the green stuff and then turn in other colors. So I can give you like a few seconds of what my video would actually look like um, to get a general idea what you could do from your restroom. Right, uh, it's in Cantonese. But you can see that it looks professional, right? I don't have the lighting, I don't have all the stuff. It's just the app I use in my iPhone and then turn the background um, to something else. It, it, it looks professional, but now I don't care. I just do it anywhere. The, the reason I do it at home is that I just want to wake up and do it. I don't want to, you know, 
um, schedule a uh, studio or do things like that, it takes time. So I just want to make myself easier um, in order to spread out more content. Because obviously, um, you need to know your position of your business or your as a person that obviously I'm not selling you because of my hairstyle, right? <laughs> Definitely not, right? So I'm not selling you with the video quality, right? So I'm selling the value, which is the most important stuff I'm talking about from the content itself in the video about digital marketing stuff, SEO stuff, or WordPress stuff. So as long as you know where your value is, you don't care other stuff, right? Just make it simple. So the other concept I would like to do is um, a lead generation concept. Um, it could go along along, but I would just make it really simple. So WordPress has a lot of uh, different plugins which make it easier. You can turn your WordPress site into a different landing page. And as a, as a landing page or lead generation page, the idea is you want people to go to your page and then perform certain action you want them to. In other words, that um, if you have a normal website, you normally have like a menu or other different stuff, right? It will distract the users from what you want them to see. But a landing page is that you do not have a menu at all. You just have very specific message or image or headline that to tell them to do only one thing at a time. Um, a quick um, sample would be something like this. So they go to a page, you tell them to download something, and then you collect something from them. It's a fair deal, it's an exchange for the email or, or their content. And the idea of a lead generation is something fall into what we call a funnel. So basically you put traffic in. Um, the reason I, I do the content um, multiplication strategy is that I want to reach more people and then I want to throw more traffic into the top of it, which is a traffic, and then I can qualify the leads and then at the end of the day, it will go to, uh, they will become my customer. So it will go to something like this. Maybe in your funnel, it may involve more stuff, but at the end of the day, you still need to have traffic and qualify the leads. So besides the traffic, the other important thing will be the um, conversion. If you throw a lot of the uh, customer into your website, but if your conversion rate is only like 1%, um, so you can put a lot of budget or money um, for the advertising for the traffic, but it doesn't really help for you to capture the business or convert them to your customer. So conversion rate is another thing, um, which you do not need a lot of traffic, but you can also get a good money for, um, from the customer. So conversion uh, is more like what you want them to do uh, by step by step. And this is just another example similar to that one. Um, you want them to do a specific action um, on your page instead of they, they go around, navigate around uh, other page of your site. So just a quick question. If, if you are me, how do you attract people to submit the information? Because some people, they're actually quite concerned of the privacy. So in one basic answer, we'll be giving something free, right? It's, it's hard to resist, right? But the free uh, value has to be, has to be um, high enough for them to give up or give you their um, personal information, like email or, or number or the name. So there's some ideas of what you could actually give up for free, um, no matter what business you actually run. Um, it could be for virtual, for, for like um, coupons or, or ebook or webinar, or could be a physical product if you require the address. <coughs> so some figure that I uh, used um, a few months ago, I actually asked them to fill in the email. Um, I got about 1,240 from email, and I got in the, in the top here, that is actually something what I call web, web push. Not sure you, you guys are familiar with this. Um, when you go to a website, it will pop up something like, um, do, you, do you want to receive like a push notification from your browser, from your Chrome? Mm -hmm. If you click yes, which you do not give up your email, right? It's just pop up from your browser. 
it is uh, for those who are very concerned about the uh, privacy. So I reach out people from the email, from the um, browser, and from the Facebook as well. I put a, like a, a little chatbot in the Facebook fan page. So when people, they say hi to you, they automatically subscribe. And then you can blast things to them. Um, if you do that two years ago, recently they changed the rule a little bit. Um, you need to be careful when you do that. Um, if you if you start to think about that. All right. So the other um, main thing I want to talk about will be the SEO. So you need traffic, different sorts of traffic. You need to increase the reach in order to put people to your website, to your landing page, and then convert people um, to become your customer. So the big part to me will be the SEO. And WordPress um, by far is the most SEO friendly uh, content management system in the group. So if you use a right plugin, do the, some settings, you you will be done um, in like the technical SEO part in like 30 minutes. It will be a lot easier to use it with WordPress. So not sure this is a stupid question or not. So how does it work? Basically, uh, just a single sentence. If um, SEO just means the relevancy and the popularity. In technical terms, uh, it is the keywords, the content itself, uh, which, which consists of different combination of keywords and the links. Links is like the backlinks and then internal links, which are crucial and, and hard to get as well. So um, anyone know this guy? Um, uh, Ex-Google CEO. Um, Eric, which he was in an interview by, by a reporter that uh, that reporter keep pushing uh, him to ask how many, wh what are the reasons um, for my website to rank up and down. And eventually um, he slipped out that there's a 200 what we call ranking factor um, to, to make your website to rank on the first page or not. And you do not need to know 200 of them, maybe like 30 of them, they stay for long. Um, and those are more, more um, important like a framework of it um, and and Google actually changed a lot um, for what they show uh, recently so this is a search search engine result page for the desktop surely um, you guys know um, it goes for the title links and description and then the site link right um, some of them they don't have site link site link are those um, little things uh, here um, if your content uh, have installed some plugin, it will be automatic be up there and you have a higher exposure for people to click on your uh, contents. And for mobile, um, I remember like three months ago, they put something like this, something called favorite icon, which the result page looked a little bit different, but a lot of people did not actually use that. Um, they just put their logos in, and it's quite hard to tell uh, the logo. This is actually my website, and I have no logo at all, so I just put an arrow, so make people think, this is a link, you should click on it. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like a kind of little, little strategy that, because it's weird that it's more like a psychology stuff. If I point to something, you guys will look at that, right? If I look at that thing, you will follow where I look at, right? So it's more like an action I want you to follow. Um, because if, luckily or unluckily, you click on my link once, I will retarget you with S. So that's another thing. <laughs> so um, from, from a lot of websites I've been serving, um, roughly there's about 70% of the website, they're actually uh, using, using mobile device. But I still see a lot of um, website design agency when they do the design, they actually start from desktop. And I have no idea why they do that. They give you a design for a desktop, but that is only serving for like 30% 30, 30 of the people, right? So if you want to plan your website or strategy in, in WordPress, you should actually put more effort uh, in the mobile now instead of um, f from the desktop. And another thing is um, meta keywords. Any, anyone have meta keywords? You guys know what is meta keywords, right? Okay. Um, you guys put meta keywords in your website? No? No? Okay, good. Because it's no longer used since 10 years ago. But I still see people putting meta keywords in their website. Um, is this useful? Uh, no. Is this harmful? Probably not. But why do you put it there if it's just um, useless, right? Um, 
Google said 10 years ago um, they didn't use it. Google saw Google, uh, Yahoo saw Google actually announced that so they follow. Um, but some guy actually find out that they, they still do. Um, um, but now they shouldn't, but um, it, will, it was um, 10 years ago. And Bing wasn't using that as well. If you use it wrongly in the metadata, it will become something called a spam signal. It will make it even worse. So the other thing I would like to talk about would be the Google algorithm. I'm not going to talk all of, it, all of it, mainly on those two, the mobile and the red brain. So in four years ago, they launched two big algorithm updates. Um, basically, Google updates their algorithm about two, 200 times per day now. Um, so you do, not, you do not need to worry about too much because some of them, they are, they are minor. So in 2015, they launched algorithm for mobile, which is very important, of course. The other one is Rembrin, which is the first AI deep learning algorithm uh, for a large scale of um, search engine like this. Um, so what it does is that it becomes a brain for the Google search engine. They, sh they will understand what you search and your intention behind your search in order to give you the result. This is how, it, how they do it. And you cannot do something bad in order to track uh, Google to rank your site anymore because of that as well. So how do I, how do I know Google actually find my website or they will rank my website? So I want you to take your phone out and, and have a test. And not just for take a picture, have try, try it on your own. Um, can you type like site and then colon and then put your domains in? I suppose you guys have website, right? So you can, you can put that in your browser. If you're using mobile, um, you, can, you can still do it. But if you're using desktop, it will give you a number that Google uh, actually index how many page of your website. So you can get a general idea that um, Google index how many page of your website, which means it is the chance that your page can actually um, rank in the Google. So and anyone try that? You guys have? All right, great. OK, so the concept is Google first, they will crawl um, for, for links, for contents. And then once they crawl your page, they will consider whether they will index your page in their database or not. If they have indexed and put in the database, you can use the previous um, syntax to check how many pages has been indexed. Only the page they have indexed, you can optimize. Otherwise, you cannot optimize something that Google hasn't indexed yet. So there's a free uh, top ranking signal for, for the SEO from the 200 of the ranking signal. So the first two you have seen it, um, which is the keywords and then backlink. The third one is relate to something called Rembrandt, which is uh, user experience. For example, um, how, long, how long people will stay in your website? Um, do they only see one page and then they will leave? Um, things like that. And Google can easily know how long people stay in your website because you guys install Google Analytics, right? You use Gmail, right? You log in, right? you use Chrome and you use Google, go to a link and then click, click back if you don't like it, right? So all the information they collect will, will determine that um, your website UX is good or not in order to rank your site up or down. So a simple idea would be if someone search for keywords say Angus Tilson and if your title is good enough, more people click on your link, it gives a strong signal that um, people actually like this link better than that and then from time to time they will move you up. So th this will be the idea of the UX. And the other thing is if you have content in your website um, but your site might or might not be ranking up in, the, uh, in Google but do you know the intention of searching certain keywords in order to reach to your site? There's a few um, types of search are uh, intentional. Um, for the first one is like uh, informational. 
it's quite hard to convert them to a customer. For example, people just look for the best, uh, look for the, uh, for example, smartphone, they just type different thing. And then the commercial intention would be like, they type like best of smartphone. So they give, give a more, um, more like a comparison kind of stuff um, to the user, but it is not exactly by the point they want to buy it. They are more like in a phase of considering. And the navigational um, is more like the branding. You know, the most search in Google in the group is facebook.com, right? People actually know the domain, but they go to Google and then they search it for some reason. So the navigation is still very important. And then final, which is the transactional one, is people who are searching like buy iPhone, or they search for iPhone coupon, which they don't have, but um, people still search that. Um, when people search for particular keywords that which drive um, people to buy the uh, products or service, that will be a transactional. And this is why um, those keywords are more expensive. And if you do have some keywords relate to those aspects, it gives you um, more, more opportunity to rank in Google search. And just to give you a general idea that um, this is a report uh, from marketing uh, charts that showing uh, the Google actually dropping uh, the advertising while Amazon is increasing, uh, more people actually put advertising there. The reason is that if you go to Amazon, what, you, what will you do? You go there to buy stuff, right? You're doing research there, right? So you put advertising there. It is all about transactional. So I put advertising there, people go to the product, they buy it. So people, uh, the merchant or the brand actually recognize that. So that's why they put more budget there. And Google actually knows that. And they, although they are still the market leader, but they, they got worried. And that is why in the past year, you can see Google change a lot of the things when you search it. For example, the favorite icon, for example, the feature snippet, or they put more different stuff in the Google search in order to make the user stay on the search. One particular um, thing is that something called AMP, um, Asari mobile page. In the past, when you go to Google, you click on link, right? You go to a separate page, open a new window, right? But now when you click on that, some of the site, it will be like pop up, pop-up uh, window, you click um, close, it will stay on your Google search page. The reason behind is that because the traffic, their monies are dropping, so they want to keep you longer to, your, to their search engine, right? So that is the idea behind. So I would like to let you guys to do a really quick uh, keyword research, um, which will help you to do um, for your website. So basically, you could type in some keywords in Google now. Um, you can try that. So if you do that, say I want to find an English um, tutor. If you do that, it will show you something called Google Suggest, right? It's, it's, it's simple. But if you move your cursor to the top, uh, to the front, um, it will show you other other keywords as well. So you can simply um, take those suggested keywords from Google and try to see whether your content actually fit for those. And the reason they put those keywords in is that Google knows those are the popular keyword search or, or, or phrase. So it already tells you what are people searching in rankings. So as long as you put more similar keywords or phrases in your content, make user or make Google easier to understand your content actually match the user's search intentional, right? And it will help your website to rank um, on the top faster. And this is uh, Google suggests, and then I will move to the bottom. And then the other, uh, this one may, may not have one. Um, maybe I search other stuff. Let's say on the bottom right here. This is something called related related keywords, or what we call uh, LSI, a Latin semantic indexing. So it means that it does not necessarily need to have the exact exact keywords of what they search, as long as it has the same meaning, it will show there. 
And if you do that uh, to your content, um, you will be like outrank some of your competitor already. And the last thing I want you to have a try in your mobile as well is you go to a web, uh, you go to a search. Let's say you search a particular keywords, and then you see, okay, this is my competitor, and then I click on it, and then I click back. You will see something like this. This is actually new since few months ago, right? Only happened. Oh, uh, in mo it actually started in mobile. Uh, desktop is recently happening as well. It will show you people go to that your competitive website. We also show um, those keywords as well. People are more interested in those as well. Um, but I'm not telling you to go to your competitor and then to click back because it actually hurt their SEO. <laughs> you guys, because I go to your website for one second and I go back. The bank, the bounce rate increase, and then the time on site is like lower, right? So I, I don't tell you to attack your competitor. I'm just saying this is a way to do a competitor research, right? <laughs> don't be evil, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, that's just a screen of what I show. So the other thing I would like to talk about would be the content strategy for the um, SEO, and I need to do that quick. I only have five minutes left. Um, so this is a question I, I got asked um, a lot of the time. Do you have a lot of content? Is it, is it better for SEO? If I have um, more frequency update, more uh, article uh, in, in the website, is it, is it better that, uh, in SEO? Do you guys think yes? Do you think yeah? More content, more frequency uh, for, for SEO, yeah? And anyone, yeah, fresh content. Uh, anyone say no? No one. Right, uh, there's a couple of that there. You want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah. So I want to give you an, an idea. Um, I had a website, but this is in, in, um, in traditional Chinese. But just to give you a brief idea, let's say I search WordPress Hong Kong, and there's one of my site. I put it as a testing, right? And let me go to that homepage. For this particular website, I only have three articles. That's it. And all articles actually published since 10 months ago. So it is old and it is definitely not a fresh content. It is only free piece of content, right? So that is bad for SEO, right? All right. Let me give you the Google Analytics of my site. All right. Since I published the first content, um, only free content actually, um, eight months ago? Yeah. And I did nothing. That's it. And then it just keep rising. I'm searching for the, um, during these few months, for on the top you can see it's only for the organic search. So the traffic is for SEO only from Google traffic. And I did nothing else. Six, uh, eight months ago content, only three pieces of content, and it keep rising. Why? Because what you actually need is not just fresh content. You do not need to have a lot of content in order to rank at the top in Google. It doesn't work like that. Google does a really simple job. You go to Google, you search for something, they give you the best result of what you search. That is what they want to do. They don't say, I give you the result which the publisher give you the most content or most update content. Of course, if you're saying, I would like to buy an iPhone, I give you the latest one, right? I will show you the result of iPhone 1 or something like that. But it just didn't work like that way. You do not need to have a lot of content in order to rank really high. So let me show you what my content is. So for example, this is um, one of my content. Um, let me show you how many works I got. I got about 5,000 um, traditional Chinese words here, which is equivalent to roughly 10,000 um, words in, in English, something like that. Um, the point I'm trying to make is I do not know how to write Chinese. I actually use uh, voice to text in order to make this. And I do not do that by one go. I do that article eight times. I put like 400 words and then put it up. And then for the next few days, I put another 400 words because I cannot produce like a 5,000 word in one go. And the other thing is, 
you could always find a way to find someone else to type for you or, or do things like that. And I have uh, something called an index page. You can see it like a book, right? And the index page alone is 461 word. But the index page is good because if a user seeing uh, such a long post, they're actually scared, right? But they can always click on only the part they like to see. And because of that, they can actually search a particular keywords in Google and it will show something called site link, which I showed previously. Um, it gives you an extra benefit in order to show to the user uh, when they search a particular keyword. So what you need to do is not um, frequent content, is not um, really a fresh content. What you need to do is something that people want to see. So that's the whole idea. And this is the expert for the UX as well. And if you do not like to write, that's fine. I actually put a post like this. I asked 20 people who are experienced in WordPress. I just asked them a really simple question. Say, what do you think? What theme do you actually use? And uh, what plugin do you use? And then I just wait for the answer. That's it. And then I got 6,000 words here on the next few days. That's it. And this is really an easy way to do it. And also, um, this strategy is good for something that if you ask someone for their opinion and they put their website in, if you are being interviewed, normally they will share this particular link in their website, right? And, and in Facebook as well. So it helps to build a backlink um, in a sense. Um, because I'm actually running out of time, I have to go to the last slide. Um, which is my content. Um, but my content is in, in traditional Chinese. You can email me. I got a fan page as well. Um, I got a few hundred people there. And I use a, a lot of different tools uh, in order to increase the reach, uh, to avoid too much competition in just using Facebook or IG. I use a lot of different tools. Um, that's all for my speech today. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the freshness of the content, um, the number of the content is not. But let's say I only have three pieces of content in my website, but they are long enough, they are in-depth enough, um, so people actually recognize those three pieces of content and run a lot of different keywords related to the content. Because of the content, they are long enough, I can, I can put a lot of different keywords inside the content. So the content, they are important, but they have to be expert enough and long enough for Google to understand that um, when people see the uh, uh, article like 5,000 words, it gives them the example, uh, it gives them impression like, wow, that must be good, right? Maybe you haven't seen it, but you can send to your friend. So that is one of the way um, the long content uh, will help in a sense, yeah. Okay, so thank you. Yeah. And I have a second question. Is, is that content should be at interspace, like for example, like homepage? Right. Oh, different pages. Like, for example, like this, day we have like a whole page of nothing information of the blog post or content or about the UI. Right. <laughs> it actually doesn't doesn't really matter because you cannot put all the content on the home page, right? It would be one page, right? And you only got one chance for the Google search, right? Um, home page is, is more like, t on, on my blog, home page is like uh, indexing for the three different um, um, blog post are more like a diversified, but for the for the SEO aspect, it doesn't it doesn't need to be as long as you submit the link to Google, um, they will know. Yeah. Thanks for your question. Anyone else? Okay. Name and Hi, my name is Martha. Um, yeah. I use this SEO plugin on my WordPress site. Yeah. Yoast. Yeah, that that one is the best I okay. use. Yeah. Uh, so there's one feature which they mentioned in there, which is to switch on this feature called Constone. Yeah. Content. yeah. What is that? So you mean Search Console? Uh, yes, on Search Console. Search Console, yeah. Um, basically, um, since 2011, 
um, Google Analytics actually shut down um, the keywords which you, you were able to see in the past, what keywords people search and then they go to your website. But since 2011, it doesn't work that way because Larry Page said uh, we want to keep people privacy, so we shut it down. So you need to use something called Webmaster Tools in the past, but they renamed to a search console last year. So it gives you an idea exactly what people search um, and your, your keywords position for people to search um, to show what keywords actually uh, are doing better. And you can compare month by month um, are certain keywords, are they, are they growing or are they dropping? Or is there any new opportunity of the keywords? They might be rising. So definitely you need that if you want to understand um, what people search in order to find your website. Yeah. But you do not need to do that inside um, the, the Yoast SEO plugin. You just go to uh, Google Search Console and that will be fine. Yeah. So, but what, what happened to like, like, turn that cornerstone content on? Um, what happened? Um, it works. Um, it will show some figures uh, in, in the Yoast, as I remember, because I didn't use it. Um, because if they want to make it better, they need to keep updating the API, which I don't think they will be that frequent. Yeah, the other thing in, in the Search Console is that if you want Google to find your site faster, you need to submit an XML sitemap. Yeah, that, that will help a lot, yeah. Okay, we have time for one last question. Oh, dear, that's uh, hi, my name hi. is Stan. Uh, I would like to hear your opinion regarding the UX. Uh, so, as we said, the amount of traffic also affects your ranking. Yeah. But nowadays, people rarely go to the second page, right? So yeah. this means that the pages which are already on the first uh, Google page right. get the most traffic. Uh, how do you think uh, it would be possible for the new content to be uh, ranked right. higher? Good question. So, so basically, what I also would do, I would go to uh, Google Analytics, and then I would go to like in the past month the top traffic pages. Top traffic pages means Google already found that page, right? And you got traffic in that page. What you could do, you put internal link from that traffic pages. The idea of Google find your site is simple. They go to a um, very frequent uh, visiting page, like the top of a page, and then they will look at it every single day to see any update of it. If you put something there, it will help Google to Chrome from this page to the new page, which means Google discover the new page faster. So it does help a lot if you put internal link, but you don't put internal link in a very lazy way, which means you just stuck your link there. It doesn't work, right? You need to put something what we call a text anchor, you specifically link a keywords internally to the second page to tell Google this specific keywords belongs to the new page as well. So it will help uh, Google find it faster and then uh, help Google to rank the right keywords to the new page. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. Yep. Um, thank you. I know you probably have a lot more questions, but please look for Ivan. Yeah, I'll be here all day. I have, I have nowhere to go. I'm not going back to Hong Kong today, so yeah. Okay, so um, we'll have to make speakers set up, and in the meantime, there's an announcement.